Hello. Today I'm going to show you how to use the new scale interface to perform problems with their CSAS module. Today's video will be to show you how to create an input file from scratch using the Fulcrum program. This is not designed to teach you the underpinnings of scale. So if you don't already know scale, this video is probably not going to help you. These videos are more designed for people who understand scale or have been to the scale class at Oak Ridge, but maybe went a few years ago when they were still teaching off of the old GWiz GUI. So now that we've cleared that up, Again, this video is to show you how to create a new input file. There'll be other videos that show you different features uh, about the Fulcrum program. So we're gonna start off by clicking File here and going to New File. We're inside Fulcrum right now, so you should have already had Fulcrum opened up. And then we're gonna create a file. So let's call this one Fulcrum input. It is incredibly important that you put the .imp at the end. Otherwise, all the features that I'm about to show you won't show up. The default usually shows up as this chart, pi chart files. You can see that there's multiple files that um, scale can run. If you change it to the input as save file type as, then it will show up, but it won't automatically do that. So you either have to make sure you change the file type to IMP as I just did, or write .IMP. All right, so you see this yellow bar right across the top. That's a good indicator that you have set up your input file correctly. So the first thing we're gonna do now that we have our um, new file created is we are going to press the control key we're going to hold that down and then you're going to press the spacebar key so you see this menu has showed up and this is your first choice about what program you're going to do so we're going to do just a regular Kino 6 so we're going to click CSAS 6 and you can see uh, a general template kind of shows up. This program actually will read your syntax based on the choice that you've chosen, right? If you would pick Tsunami, it would read the syntax differently. And you can see down here in the lower right-hand corner, this validation button that's now red. And it's red because it realizes that, well, you don't have a correctly filled out CSAS 6 input file. We know that, but this will become a lot more convenient and, and helpful for you as you start writing your input file and maybe come across, you know, you maybe forget the syntax of something or, you know, fat finger something. This can help you. So, and if you click on it, it will take you to where it thinks the problem is and it gives you a little bit of an explanation as to the error. And you can make this bigger or smaller. And if you don't want to see it, you can just click validation and it'll go away. So a couple of things to start out with. If you remember in GWiz, if you wanted to do just a parameters check and just run the file to see if you would get errors, you would select the parm check and there would be like a little checkbox that you would click. So here, instead of that, if you wanted to do that, we're not going to do that this time, but if you wanted to, you just write chk and, and then run it but we're not gonna do that. We're going to leave it as blank. So this is our Fulcrum CSAS input. And here you're gonna write in your cross-section library. If you don't remember uh, what the uh, syntax is for this, you can always look it up in the scale uh, manual, which is now on the uh, ORNL website. Uh, there's some links at the bottom of this YouTube video that you can go to that will send you to that, um, that information. But here we're going to do just a NDEF 7.1. Um, and this means that it will do continuous energy. 
uh, if you put in, for example, it has a 252 group, if you did that, then it would run as a multi-group. But I'm just going to run it as continuous energy because this isn't going to be a complicated input file. So if you remember the syntax, great. You can just start writing it in. Um, and all the graphical user interfaces are behind the scenes and they won't get in your way and you can just go forth and be great. If you're like me that when I'm starting an input file from scratch, don't really remember all the syntax and I don't do it every day, then uh, you got some cheat codes that you can do. So again, control space. Control space is going to be your friend. Control space inside any of these cards or even outside the cards if you want to add a new card. So we're going to put our cursor inside the read comp card and we're going to put some comp, uh, compositions inside. So I'm going to hit control space and inside there now it gives me the library of different compositions that I can use. So you can see here anytime it says configurable you're going to know that you're going to have a graphical user interface that's going to pop up for you and that can kind of help you out through the process. For example, weight percentage composition that's down here. This window will pop up. You can name your material as you would normally do, give it the mixture number, and we'll just add in, let's do uranium and do 100%, and then here you can add in the isotopics. You can do add row, and it'll give you the isotopics for uranium. So here let's do 95%, 238, and let's do 5%. And you can see down here, your syntax um, is all in place. And if you are forget what the syntax is, if you go over here and click template in the lower right hand corner of this window, it'll tell you what each one of those things is, right? So the first thing is the name of the weight percent, then the mixture number, theoretical density, and number of weight percentages that are in there, et cetera. Okay, so let's do that. All right, now if we go back in, now that we've created this example um, composition, and now let's say we wanna do an atom uh, compound. It does not default, it doesn't know that you've already created a mixture. Uh, that was a nice feature in GWiz where it would auto change the next mixture to the next number. So you have to remember to go in here and manually do that. And that's no matter which one of these you're picking. So let's go into standard composition. Another feature that GWiz has that Fulcrum does not have is the ability to select what your um, composition uh, units are. We had a feature in GWiz that allowed us to select number density, and then it would know that what we were typing in was number density. That feature doesn't exist here. So you can either manually type it in if you know the syntax, and you remember what the syntax of your uh, composition is. If you don't, you can always look it up in the standard composition library in the scale manual, but as kind of a little bit of a cheat, you can go in here and it has the list of all of your compositions in it. So what we're going to do today is plutonium. So if you type while you're inside this drop down and you type the first two letters, it'll get you to that area so you don't have to scroll all the way down. We're going to do 239. I want the temperature. I'm going to leave it as 293 here, but I want it to show up. I don't want to have to type it in. I don't want to do weight percentages. I want to do a number density. So now I'm going to click OK. And I'm going to change my volume fraction uh, from 1 to 0. And when I do that, what that tells, as you may remember, but if you've forgotten, it's OK, it tells the computer that the number that comes next is a number density. So I'm going to put in 3.7 e to the negative 2. If 
you hover your mouse over any of these numbers and then right click, it'll remind you what, um, what that number refers to. So this one refers to mixture. You see down here this evaluate button when I hit the right click and the menu popped up. If let's say you want to now double your composition of 239, you put multiply two, and you highlight that and right click, you can select evaluate and evaluate it. You can also just hit control E after you highlight it as well. And it will do the simple math for you. I'm gonna leave it as it is though and delete that. So now here, it knows when you do CSAS that you need at least one global unit. So it kind of defaults and gives you that um, framework to start with. We're only gonna use one unit, so it will be global. Uh, I'm inside the geometry card right now, so I'm going to hit control space again. And I'm going to select sphere. You can either scroll down, there's not that much, and again, you see all of these have configurable, most of them do. Or you can just start typing in sphere, and it will show up, and if you click enter, you now get your graphical user interface for the sphere. If you want to do or need to do chords, you have that ability in here. You just select chords, that checkbox, and then that will pop up and you can have add as many of your chords in as you want. You can change the origin of your sphere um, and you can change the rotation of it. But we're gonna keep it simple today. Um, also in here, even though there's a drop down field, um, it just stays with one. Again, just like the compositions, it won't default to the next number as you go through your um, different geometries. So, you, but you can go in and manually change it. I know some of us like to use um, tens for geometries, um, maybe like hundreds for arrays and stuff like that. So you can go in here and manually change it. Um, manually enter in your radius, we're going to do 6.3 centimeters, and that's it. That's the end of the story. There's no more. Uh, if you Again, if you forget what any of this means, you can go to template and it will tell you. So click OK. There's our first sphere. We're going to do one more, and this time I'm just going to use the regular sphere syntax. That just gives you the default syntax without all the graphical user interface stuff. I'm going to say this is 6.35. And then I'm going to change the boundary to my sphere 20 because that's my outer sphere. Now we need to put some materials in here. So again, if you hit control space and start typing in media, you can't see it because it's outside of my screen, so I'm going to do it like this. And here you see media and configurable. I click media and it pops up. Um, again, there is no drop down automatically notating all of the materials that you put in. So each time you do this, you would need to go in to the material um, drop down, which also serves as a text box and you can change it to material two. But for the first one, we're gonna do material one. You add a row. Um, here we're gonna change the ID from one to 10 because I want sphere 10. And I want it to be on the inside. Material one uh, is my plutonium gadolinium mix and I want it inside that sphere. And then I'm gonna click okay. I'm going to go back into media again, control space, picking up the graphical user interface. I'm gonna change this material to two, and I'm gonna add two rows. The first one is going to be sphere 20, which is the outer sphere. And material two will be inside that. And then I'm gonna add another row. This is going to be sphere 10 and 
material to will be outside of sphere 10. And you can see down here that sphere 10 has a negative next to it, which we all know means it's outside of sphere 10. 20 is positive. And if we go back over here to template, this gives you your material. This is your bias ID and, um, and then your states of your materials. So let's click OK. So now we have all our material cards. So now what we're going to do is add a couple of extra cards in that are not automatically generated when we select CSAS 6. So the first one is our read cell card. So I'm hitting control space outside of any of the other cards. So outside of uh, N, ge N geometry and I'm selecting cells that is going to bring up the read cell data. And then I'm going to put my mouse inside my cursor inside the read cell data card and I'm going to hit control space again. And now all my different cell options come up. We have spheres, so I'm going to select multi-region spherical. Before I do, you will notice that none of these have a configurable option in them. So when I select them, I'm just going to get the default syntax that I will then have to manually change. So I'm going to select multi-region spherical from the menu option. And I, like I said, I get the default um, syntax. So the first thing I'm going to do, and this I am copying out of the um, scale uh, primer for, for Kino 6, is the uh, right body and left body feature. So we're leaving right body as vacuum, but we're going to add in left body and we're going to say that's equal to reflected and then we're going to go down here and if you hold your mouse over the one and right click you'll see that's defining the mixture and then the next uh, number if you right click on it is the radius so this is going to be the mixture inside the radius of our sphere 10 that's where mixture one lives. So we're going to put in 6.3 there. Mixture two is our nickel, and that is going to be the outer radius of 6.35. And we don't have a third mixture, so we can just delete this. And now we're done with our cell data. So we are going to now right click outside of end cell data and we're going to add in our parameters. Again, I hit control space to bring up that menu. Now I want to add in some parameters. So if you control space inside of parameters, you will see a large menu of options that are not in alphabetical order. But if you remember what they should kind of start with, um, you can start typing in letters. So I'm going to type in N and that's going to filter out all of the ones that have uh, start with N. I want the number per generation. I'm going to leave the defaults. I'm not going to change them, but obviously you can if you want to. You cannot click multiple ones of these at the same time, right? You can't just hold down the control uh, key and just click all the ones that you want, unfortunately. so. If you need to be doing this, and most of us don't, we kind of remember these, but you just need to go back in and hit control space each time. So now I'm going to do number of skip generations. Uh, the good news is that for any that you've selected, it doesn't bring them back up into the menu after you see that even though I typed in N, uh, number per generations isn't there anymore. And then the last one is generation, so control space, G, generations. All right. I am going to take check out. Well, let's leave it in. And we're going to run the program. So now that I ran the program and I did leave check in, uh, you saw initially, and that helped me to realize that I had typed in um, 
my cross-section library incorrectly. Um, so when I read my message file, which I pulled up for us here, it said it failed to load Ampex Library V7.1 because that does not exist. And as you can see in the video already, I have made the correction for you. It popped up on your screen that this was the correct library. That's what I get for doing things um, from memory without looking them up. Uh, so to run, uh, in case you missed it, you click the run button or you can click the arrow button and drop down and click run in background. In our next video, we will talk more about the navigation pane. We will talk more about all the different files that you can look at in Fulcrum and some of its graphing features. Uh, but for right now, that's it. This is how to create an input file in Fulcrum using some of the graphical user interface features. I hope this has been helpful. Um, please, if you have any ideas for additional videos that you'd like to see, uh, please contact me through my um, contact information down below and let me know. Thank you.